How are you doing, boys and girls? Uh, this is Dr. Ford from jkowners.com, and uh, today I'm going to show you how to solder wires. Now, this is part of a larger uh, technical write-up that's being done for JK Owners, and you'll be able to find it on the, on the main page once it's finished, showing you everything from basic uh, Jeep electrical upgrades on to how to do wiring for lighting systems and high amperage items. Now, the reason why I'm showing you how to solder today is it's one of the most walked over and ignored things that people do when they do electrical modifications. They'll find any other lazy ass way to do stuff besides actually soldering the connection. Uh, I mean, I've seen everything from electrical tape, freaking home wiring nuts, anything that they can do to get away from, you know, spending the time to make sure that you have a positive electrical connection. Now, crimp connectors are okay and they work well, but the problem is people just use these cheap blue ass ones that you pick up at AutoZone. And they're not waterproof, they're not sealed, they're not anything. What happens is when you're using one of these substandard connectors, uh, if you live anywhere where they salt the roads or by the ocean, all these electrical connections are going to corrode out. And I'll be honest, uh, I used to not solder my connections. I used to use crimp connectors. And when I moved from Southern California to Maryland, and after my first winter, all of a sudden I started having oddball wiring shorts everywhere because all these connections were corroding. And after that, after going through the entire Jeep and rewiring the entire thing, uh, I, you do it once. And that's the primary thing here, is you do things once so you don't have to do them again. That and soldering is also temporary. Unlike a crimp connector, once you crimp down a crimp connector, you can't uncrimp it. Uh, you could try all you want, but it, it ain't going to happen. You pretty much have to cut the wire and then pull them apart. With soldering... All I have to do is uh, heat it up with a soldering iron, and I can pull the wire apart, re-solder it. Pull it apart, re-solder it. Uh, <clears throat> so the primary tools that we're going to show you how to use today is, first, is high amperage soldering iron. Okay, real common. Harbor Freight and Tools, whatever brand, you can go blingity bling. Uh, I don't use a soldering iron often enough to justify spending hundreds of dollars on one. Uh, the only time I really ever use a soldering iron, like this, is when I'm inside the house. Because um, working out in the Jeep, this is awkward as hell. Uh, so, but it works great. The other tool is your typical butane torch. Now, this, on the other hand, I use all the time. <clears throat> like 90% of my soldering is done with this. And I don't use a soldering tip connector. I just use a straight up flame. Uh, the reason why is I'm switching between soldering and then heat shrinking. We'll cover that in a minute. So... <clears throat> There's no point in me having the little tip on there with the little soldering tip. <clears throat> okay. The next thing is your solder. Okay. Uh, notice the key word here. Electrical. Okay. That's the main thing you want to pay attention to. You don't want to use plumbing solder or other weird ass, you know, non-electrical solder. Okay. Plain electrical solder. You can pick it up at Walmart. You can pick it up at friggin' Radio Shack. It doesn't matter as long as you're using electrical solder. When you're getting into the high-end connections is when you need to pay attention to like your silver content or whether it's silver bearing or lead bearing. But for our simple electrical connections, we're dumbing things down. <clears throat> now, the next thing is heat shrink tubing. The first example I'm going to show you is the typical polyfill heat shrink tubing that you get from friggin Home Depot or your average electrical store or friggin AutoZone. It's just regular plain heat shrink tubing. Uh, this shit sucks. The only thing that this is going to do is keep the wires from touching something else and creating a short. Okay. I don't use this crap. Okay. Uh, what I use is heavy walled adhesive lined. Okay. Heat shrink tubing. You can get this from any quality electrical place. Um, I usually order it online from places like Dell City. Uh, you can get it in variable colors. You can get it in uh, multiple shrink rates, and it's adhesive line. What that means is when this is heated up, there's an adhesive lining the entire inside of the tube, and it will seal up against the wire for a completely waterproof connection. Okay, and when when you buy it, it comes in friggin' four foot lengths. So. It's it's actually cheaper to buy it online. I'll buy like 10 or 20 sticks of this stuff in different sizes. And then when I start to get low again, I'll order more. But let's get to the electrical connections. <clears throat> Got some sample wires here just so I can demonstrate for you. Okay. Now, the first thing is you want to go and make sure that your wires are clean. Make sure they're all nice and shiny. Okay. Uh, the 
especially if you hold the wire that's sitting around the Jeep or wire that's been exposed to moisture, this will get all dark and you need it to be nice and, clean, nice and shiny and a clean connection. Uh, I'm now, <laughs> I'll give you a warning now. A lot of what I'm going to be doing here may not be the exact way to do an electrical connection. I'm showing you what works best for me and exactly how easy it is to do a soldering connection. <clears throat> Our first connection is going to be done using the soldering iron. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, twist up my wire <clears throat> so that I have a nice, there we go, nice solid twist. Okay. Then I'm going to go and take the soldering iron. Now this ought to be fun to try to do it with uh, with two hands, okay. So, soldering iron and solder. Now, like I said, I'm working with two hands. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and take my solder, put a little 90 degree bend in it, okay, and hold it so that I can go and touch, sorry, so I can go and touch the solder to the connection. So, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go and press a little trigger on the soldering iron, and place it under the wire. And what it's going to do is it's going to heat up the wire. And what you want to do is you want to, you're heating up the wire, you're not heating up the solder. Okay? <clears throat> Let's see if I can balance it there. That'll make my life a lot easier. Once the solder's heat, once the wire is heated up, the solder will literally wick. Oops. Get this bitch hot again. The solder will literally wick into the wire. You don't want a big glob. You want it nice and sealed. Come on, stop moving. Wait a second, this thing's kicking my ass. This is why I don't like using soldering irons. Now they just sell these nifty little tools and shit, so that. Oh. Come on. Ah, fucking piss me off. There we go. Okay, so it's got a nice little glob of solder. Now watch as I heat it up the solder is going to go and wick into the wire. If you see, oh, sorry about the little glob there, but if you notice, like here, you can see how it's all shiny and silver, okay? It's because the, the, the solder becomes liquid and wicks into the wiring, okay? It produces a nice little connection. Now, I can go ahead and hit the soldering iron and get rid of this little bump and shit, and that's what I'm going to do, because I, I like everything to be nice and smooth, so. Heat it up. Now, some people prep their soldering irons in different ways. I don't use this thing often enough to sit there and shine it all up and tin it. There we go. There we go. And nice connection. Now, the next way <clears throat> is using the torch. Same thing. Go and twist up your wire. Now, the great thing about the torch is I can go and set up the torch, turn it on, and then lock it on <clears throat> so that I can use both hands. Same thing, I'm heating up the wire, not the solder. So, I'm going to touch the flame right to the middle of the wire and place the solder on top of the wire. And what'll happen is, there we go. So it wicks in there nicely. See how much quicker that is? Okay, that's why I use a torch. Uh, sorry, I suck with the fucking soldering iron. The next thing is heat shrinking, okay? <clears throat> Preemptive thing. When you're doing heat shrinking, always put your heat shrink on the wire before you solder it, okay? Now, I'm working with 
just uh, some scrap wire here to show you how. But what I would do is normally cut the sun, measure out my heat shrink tubing, cut it, slide it onto the one of the wires, then solder, then heat shrink. Okay, so I'm gonna cut a little length of uh, heat shrink tubing here and slide it on. And then with the torch, I'm going to gently, not right the fuck on it, okay, gently heat it, I'm starting from the middle and working my way out. Because if you're not careful with the torch, you will melt and bubble the shit out of everything. Okay, let me see if I can get this close enough so that you can see how it's starting to seal. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now, see how it's all nice and clear? Oops, sorry. See how it's all nice and clear? and shiny in there and there's no air <clears throat> all the air bubbles are pushed out okay this is a waterproof permanent fucking connection you never have to worry about this you never have to worry about salt water corroding it you never have to worry about uh it accidentally falling apart this is permanent or temporary i mean like i said you can disassemble this if you want to i could just take a knife split the heat shrink tube and peel it off Heat this with the soldering iron, and it'll come apart. Here, I'll demonstrate with this one, okay? Got the, the solder connection. I turn on my torch, heat it up, and gently pull it apart. Oops. And ta-da! It's taken apart again. Now, one second, let me see if I have a um, crimp connector to show you how to solder a crimp connector. <clears throat> Which you probably don't. <clears throat> ah, here we go. Okay. Like I was telling you about with heat shrink tubing, okay? These are quality, heat, quality friggin' <laughs> crimp connectors. You crimp it and then you heat shrink it, okay? And they also have these, what, oops, they also have these with low temperature solder in them. So you would crimp it heat shrink it and as you're heat shrinking it it would set the solder into the connection okay Okay, sorry for the delay. I had to go grab the um, supplies to go and show you how to solder a crimp connector. Now, you can go and buy cheap-ass crimp connectors like this. Now, they work okay, but once again, they're not sealed or anything like that. What you do is you go and take these cheap plastic ones with a little plastic shield and shit. Go and take a pair of pliers and gently, or your crimpers, and gently crimp around the plastic here. And what it'll do is slightly crimp the plastic and detach the two. Okay, this part you can throw away. Okay, this is the part that you want. And I'm going to show you how to solder it on. Okay. You got your prepped wire, your crimp connector. Go and use your crimping tool. Now, some people have crimping tools, and that's the correct way to do it. Some people just have a friggin' pair of pliers. Um, I'm just doing a temporary demonstration, so... The first thing I'm going to do is cut myself a little length of heat shrink tubing, about half an inch long. And I'm going to slide it onto my wire. Okay. Then I'm going to go attach my crimp connector. And crimp it in place. Okay. Now the crimp really isn't the major component here. Okay. And I kind of fucked it up a little bit. The crimp is not the major component here. The major component is you're going to be soldering it on instead of crimping it on. Set up your blowtorch. Turn it on. And you're going to heat up the connector and then touch the solder right there where the wiring is. Okay, and it's heating up. And little dabs of solder. And what it does is it creates a nice connection right there. Okay, and then I'm going to let it cool down. Once it cools down, I'm 
I'm going to go and slide my heat shrink tubing all the way up onto it. And now I have a permanent soldered connection. Okay, this thing will never fail. So, anyway, I gave you the basic primer on, uh, on soldering. So, go out, practice, have some fun, and uh, go and read the rest of the article on jkowners.com, and you all have a good day.